Hello, welcome back. So today we are working on a carrier package rooftop unit. So it's a combined uh, AC with the natural gas fire furnace. And this is an 8 ton AC 2 stage 2 compressor. And this unit is side discharge as you can see here. And uh, this is serving a public library. So the customer was complaining that uh, the area where this unit serves is not heating properly or having an issue with the heat. So we're gonna open up the unit and uh, check what is going on. Let's get started. So first thing first, disconnect the main power before opening everything. So I'm gonna touch the unit uh, by jumping. So I don't need to check the error code and everything. And this unit is 2012 and it's very old. So we're gonna also look at to the heat exchanger, which should be here on this portion. Okay, so I have opened up the all panels and as you can see this unit is rusted very much on the vendor motor mounting mounting area so and if you see here we got a big hole so of course the power is off so let's uh, let's uh, understand the sequence of operation of this unit first so first step is called for heat which comes from the thermostat in which the first stage heating calls and the switch inside the thermostat between R to W1 closes and the thermostat wires are connected here on this control board and when there is a call for heat then the next step is pre pause start this winter motor starts and which is also called a pre purge and this unit doesn't have a pressure switch or you can call it a air proving switch this has looks like a kind of a centrifugal switch to me but uh, if I'm wrong just let me know so <coughs> when the motor gets its uh, certain RPM the switch at the back side closes and which is directly connected to the control board here this twisted wire so which ensures the winter motor is running and then the and at the same time uh, the control board also check for all the safeties are closed like a uh, rollout switch here high limit if they are closed then the trial of ignition starts in which uh, the control board sends a high voltage through this wire to which is directly connected to the igniter at the burner section and the gas valve they uh, catch their voltage simul uh, I think uh, at the same time and the gas flows through this manifold to the burner and the igniter uh, spark Igniter uh, generates spark and we have ignition and the proof of ignition is done by the flame sensor which is this wire connected to the flame sensor inside there and we have a micro amp signal and after few seconds the blower motor starts so this is how the heating system works in this unit okay so the filters are dirty but not uh, kind of a seriously blocked but we're gonna replace it and the belt is nice and tight I don't see any issue with the belt and no cracks looks fine to me okay so let's get started uh, uh, power is on and I'm gonna jump between uh, R2 W1 so we have an ignition okay flame is out 
He's gonna go for the second second trial. So definitely our gas valve is okay, all the safeties are okay, that's why we are having ignition. But the thing is it's not holding the fire so somehow it is related to the control board or the flame sensor. The most probably gonna be the flame sensor because as you can see the condition of the unit is like a too much rusty or maybe the contact or the flame sensor is rusty. So I think it's gonna go for the third, yeah, that's the third drive. I think after the third trial we will have the alarm. Okay, so the board is locked out now. Okay, so I have removed my jumper. So let's test the fan. Uh, jump between R2G. So the fan is working fine. So this unit is way old, so I'm gonna check the heat exchanger. So I'm gonna open up this uh, metal plate here. So let's see. Okay, so let's see. Now this side is looking okay. But if we move here, we have a hole here. here and a big hole here on the second tube here we have a big hole here here okay and we have a big crack here so as I doubted the uh, heat exchanger is cracked so we have to shut down the heat we have to remove uh, we have to remove WN and W2 wire on the control board and we have to turn off the gas valve and the main gas valve right there so and also gonna let the customer know that uh, this unit is not safe to run because uh, <coughs> Whenever we have an ignition, the fire, the flame goes through these tubes, and the fan runs on the top of uh, these uh, tubes. And uh, if we have a crack, then the product of combustion will mix with the main fire, and that will go to the main building. So, which is very unsafe. So, we're gonna shut down the unit on the heating side. And let the customer know if they want to replace it or replace the heat exchanger or the new unit. Okay, so we are back here. The customer says that they're gonna go ahead with the heat exchanger replacement. So we're gonna change the heat exchanger and uh, yeah. Also, we have issue with the flame sensor. So let's get started. Okay, so for to take out the heat exchanger. I think it will come so we have I have to open all the mounting of the heat exchanger and it will slide down like this way and first thing first I have to open up this plate of course the power is off this plate and so that I will be having a, a good access to that side and of course I have to remove the venter motor and the I think I have to remove the gas manifold or no okay I have to check that uh, if I have to remove that uh, gas line or no uh, because some some of the screws are like uh, way inside so that uh, that will be very painful to get them out okay let's remove this plate first okay look at the condition wow it's very bad looks like uh, the Okay, now I think we have to remove this uh, <coughs> this plate here, and 
and I think uh, then after that one screw there and one screw there I think that uh, we will have a little bit of room then this whole manifold with the burner assembly gonna slide down a little bit at the back side okay so I have removed the bunter motor power supply wire and the air brewing switch wire and now I have to take the venter motor out okay our venter motor is completely out and the next thing we're gonna open up this whole mounting plate and all, uh, I have also removed all the mounting screw of the heat exchanger and after that I have to open up this road which is holding the these tubes so one not here the second one is on the back side okay, I have removed this uh, road and now after giving it a little bit weight it's got a little bit free so now I have to slide it down at this side okay our heat exchanger is completely out okay, so, we have, so that was in very bad shape here okay so this is our heat exchanger uh, sorry the igniter this is looking very dirty this is igniter and that gap should be one eighth of the inch and I'm also gonna clean out the burner and the passage as you can see the spark generate at the first burner and the flame goes out at the last of the burner where the uh, flame sensor is located that ensures the flame is successfully has traveled back at to the last part to the last bur last of the burner and and these are the passages which ensure uh, the flame goes through these passage up to the last burner so we're gonna clean that also and we're gonna clean that uh, igniter and hopefully that will fix the issue but if not I have I have to find out uh, like a new igniter from my truck the mounting gonna be a little bit different but uh, we'll get the job done Okay, I have replaced the filters. Those are the dirty one. Okay, so this is the new heat exchanger. We got some uh, package of gaskets, uh, two ret flame retainer plate, and there is one plate on which the winter motor mounts. Okay, so we have to mount this plate and this uh, winter motor mounting plate on the heat exchanger. So we have put the older one side by side so that I can mount all the plate without any confusion okay I have mounted both the plates one is here with the gasket and the second one is the venter motor mounting plate but we have to put a slot right here because when the five burner shoots their flame inside those tube and they go like a 
in between the tubes and come back here on the venter motor and if we do not seal it it gonna suck the air through this gap okay i have applied a high temperature silicon on the gap and hopefully it's gonna be okay i'm gonna mount the venter motor right here before putting the heat exchanger back in because uh, right now i have a uh, i have a full access and it's going to be very easier to put the venter motor heat exchanger assembly is completely ready for the unit so let's uh, put it back okay i have slided down the heat exchanger completely into the unit and now i'm gonna put all the mounting screw and then i'm gonna I have, I have already cleaned the flame sensor, check the connection, everything is looking okay and hopefully they're gonna fix the issue and then we will connect back the winter motor connections and then okay everything is back in I have connected the winter motor wire cleaned the flame sensor igniter, burners and all the bolts are back heat exchanger is back in completely so let's jump to between r to w1 and it's a little bit raining so what i can do i will put a cover plate here and then i'll start the unit so we have to let it burn Okay, so we are done for today. The so unit is working fine. Thermostat is calling for heat, so it's working. So, see you next time. Thank you.